Hi friends, it's Pastor John Fleming. I'm here to welcome you to Open Door Church's online worship for the week of July 16th. Today, I welcome my new colleague, Pastor Jenny Smith, who is here to lead worship for us, to share a word from, uh, from the Holy Scriptures and to, uh, to bring us into this new day. Uh, and so friends, I want to offer this prayer for you as we begin worship today. Gracious and holy God, prepare us in this moment for worship. By the power of the Holy Spirit, help us to open our hearts and minds so that we may receive what you have in store for us today. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. these words from Matthew 13 verses 1 through 9, 18 through 23 in the Common English Bible. That day Jesus went out of the house and sat down beside the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he climbed into a boat and sat down. 
the whole crowd was standing on the shore. He said many things to them in parables. A farmer went out to scatter seed. As he was scattering seed, some fell on the path and birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on rocky ground where the soil was shallow. They sprouted immediately because the soil wasn't deep. But when the sun came up, it scorched the plants and they dried up because they had no roots. Other seed fell among thorny plants. The thorny plants grew and choked them. Other seed fell on good soil and bore fruit, in one case a yield of 100 to 1, in another case a yield of 60 to 1, and in another case a yield of 30 to 1. Everyone who has ears should pay attention. Consider then the parable of the farmer. Whenever people hear the word about the kingdom and don't understand it, the evil one comes and carries off what was planted in their hearts. This is the seed that was sown on the path. As for the seed that was spread on rocky ground, this refers to people who hear the word and immediately receive it joyfully. Because they have no roots, they last for only a little while. When they experience distress or abuse because of the word, they immediately fall away. As for the seed that was spread among thorny plants, this refers to those who hear the word, but the worries of this life and the false appeal of wealth choke the word and it bears no fruit. As for what was planted on good soil, this refers to those who hear and understand and bear fruit and produce. In one case, a yield of 100 to one, in another case, a yield of 60 to one, and in another case, a yield of 30 to one. I invite us into a spirit of prayer together. Holy and gracious God, we thank you for this day, for the breath in our lungs and the life in our bodies. We give to you the places in our lives in this season, both individually and collectively, that feel burdened, that feel heavy, that feel tense, that feel out of our control. We confess, oh God, we do not often like this feeling. And so we fight it and we force things and we try to make life go the way that we want, the way that we will be safe, the way that everything will be okay. And yet, God, you are here with us even in the places that we don't see you or sense your love. And so continue, O oh God, to give us eyes to see and ears to hear, to notice where you are scattering seeds with abandon, to invite us to notice where we have roots and where we struggle, and to be open and ready to receive this love and grace and power that you long for us to engage and embody, to receive and then to offer to the world around us. We give you thanks for our individual campus churches and the collective identity we hold together here in Salem and Kaiser. Would you continue to work in us, through us, and even in spite of us in this new season? We lift to you in the places, the places in our world where hate is the headline, the places where it does not look like beloved community. God, would you continue to use us as your church in this new season? We ask these and all things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
since I was 21. It was my senior year of college in Florida and three friends and I rented an apartment, a short walk from campus. 20 years later, we are now living in an apartment again, but this time with two kids. And we're on the second floor of two stories. We spent the first few days trying to be quiet so as not to disturb the people below us. We're careful not to let the door slam shut at odd hours. Is it okay to flush the toilet this late at night? Who wants to take the dog out on a leashed walk again? Kids, keep your voices down. It's an interesting layer of anxiety sharing space with people we don't quite know yet. It's a big change for us. But it's been a week or two now and I do notice us getting used to the trappings of apartment life. I love opening the door to the balcony in the morning and smelling all this beautiful clean air. There's no grass to cut. There's no recycling bins to wheel to the curb. It's just the right amount of space for now. And it's really has been a big change, but I think it's going to work for a season. How do you feel about change? Maybe sometimes you welcome it with open arms. Doesn't feel scary, bring it on. Maybe other times it feels disorienting and even really uncomfortable. Wherever we fall on that spectrum in different seasons, change can bring anxiety. We humans like to feel in control of the world around us. And much I have found of the spiritual life is learning how to let go of what we could never control in the first place. So our hands are open to receive the love and gifts of God. I've noticed it's hard to receive the wisdom and perspective and grace that I desperately need when I am clinging to control and certainty. Today, Let's reflect a bit on roots, pastoral transitions, 
the role of pastor and congregant, and what could happen when we sow together. Our Jesus story today is a well-known parable for those of you who've been doing the church thing for a while. And if you're newer to this story, it's a fascinating one. Jesus has a crowd again, so he hops on a boat for story time. Farmers scatter seed, some on a path and the birds eat it, some on rocky ground but the soil is shallow and the seeds sprout but they can't live without their roots. Some fall in the thorns and they can't quite make it either, but others fall on good soil and they bear fruit, loads of fruit. Jesus shares this story as a way to help his listeners understand the kingdom of God, the ways that we are invited to live and love. So we're invited to pay attention to the things that harm and hurt us and what it means to choose life. We're invited to nurture our roots in our faith. It's where true wisdom and strength reside. So among you today, who loves to play in the dirt? Who loves science? Who loves nature, creation? Let's do a little refresher for a moment around roots. Roots anchor a plant. Roots absorb water and nutrients. Roots move growth to where it is needed. They store the nutrients. Roots bind soil particles together. They are a lifeline. Roots take up the air, the water, the nutrients from the soil to the leaves where they can interact with the sun to produce sugars, flavors, and energy for the plant. Jesus wants us to root, to anchor ourselves in God's love in this world. And what do you get to do as roots? You absorb life. You move it to where it is needed. You hold the story of who we are and whose we are. You bind yourselves together. You are the lifeline. Be the root, one might say. So what happens to the roots when a new gardener comes to town? Let's talk pastoral transitions here for a moment. Now I'm going to keep going with this metaphor, but for our talking purposes today, the gardener is the pastor. So some gardeners, aka pastors, they rip up all the roots and they transplant them to an entirely new part of the garden. The gardener might lack the ability to wisely discern the gifts and opportunities of those said roots. Instead, the gardener assumes their way is the best way without much thought to how this affects the roots or if their way is even wise and healthy for this specific root system. Some gardeners, other ones, hang out and they don't tend the roots much. They see the overgrown areas and spaces where life is getting choked out a bit and maybe they're scared or unsure or unaware. Not much changes. Some gardeners stand at the gate with arms crossed and say, we don't go in that part of the garden. It can't be trusted. There's nothing for us there. Just stay right where you're at. This is where it's safe. But some gardeners see the roots for what they really are. A beautiful gift of life. They see their wisdom in the root, they see their pain and their hopes. And instead of transplanting them or ignoring them, this type of gardener points in a new direction and says, what if we grew that direction? What might we find over there? Maybe some new ways of being alive? We can go that way together I think, friends, the most effective pastoral leaders are sowers and cheerleaders and question askers, not gatekeepers. The role of pastor is to empower the roots to receive all the gifts of life that are already theirs. To survey the entire garden and curiously point in one specific direction. 
What if we grew together with that direction in mind? And honestly, as has already happened in the first week alone here at the Open Door Churches, the pastor slash gardener gets to learn from the roots. A few things this gardener is already hearing. Where is our future? Younger people have a totally different frame of reference. It feels like we're living in a foreign world. It's my job to adapt and relate, but it is hard. Someone else said, we've had so many conversations about visions in the future, and I want to be hopeful, but honestly, I'm a little jaded, and I'm a little tired. We don't have money to hire staff, so we rely on volunteers, and there aren't as many of us as there used to be. We worry the wider community doesn't know who we are and what's possible here. Friends, I hope we can be honest roots in this season. We can pull a few weeds and gently clear away any debris that's gotten in the way of seeing new possibilities. Together, I wonder if new pathways forward will present themselves and together we'll sense the next right direction to grow together. In the season of transition, may we hold this beginning loosely, acknowledging any anxiety that emerges, sitting with the questions that bubble up, noticing the energy that weaves its way among us because it is probably the Holy Spirit. One of my most favorite and sometimes very annoying parts of being the body of Christ is that we see everything based on the lens of our own experience. I still catch myself feeling surprised when other people read scripture and see something entirely different than what I do. Your way of living the Jesus life will look different than how I embody it. And that's okay. It's good. We think the divine I think the divine hopes we're showing up to this life that we get to live with as much love and grace as we can bear for ourselves, our families, and our communities. And it is going to look a million different ways. And that is both the awkwardness of this work together and the beauty. And I think it's another reason that moving pastors around can be really helpful. A different pastor gives their take on the Jesus life through the lens of their unique story. And as you get to know mine, you'll see everything I've experienced directly shapes how I experience the holy in this life. Is my way the only way? No, not at all. Is it one way that might sow a few seeds here? Sure. Friends, it is an honor to be one of your pastors in this season. So may God do beautiful things among us as roots, as gardeners, as soil. May we anchor ourselves in God's love. May we absorb life and move it to where it is most needed. May we get wildly creative as we respond to the nudges of the Holy Spirit. Maybe there's an entirely new part of the garden we haven't even imagined yet. May it be so. Amen. Morning by morning new mercies I see. Oh.
all I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above, join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings are mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Friends, it is a joy to give this day to the missions and ministries that are so important to the Open Door Church community. So we invite you to give with joy, with generosity for the work of these churches together in Salem, Kaiser, and around the world. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, receive these gifts given with trust and hope and love. Multiply them in ways we could never, ever imagine. May these dollars land in just the place they are needed most. And may this giving continue to change us and change our world. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Good morning, churches. My name is Jenny Smith, and I serve as one of your pastors here in the Open Door Church community. And today is your Open Door Church's Minute, and you get to meet me and hear a little bit about us. So just want to tell you, uh, my husband and I, Aaron, have been married for 18 years and he loves to work in computer and IT field. He'll be working for the Salem Kaiser School District this fall. And he's also going to uh, step into the shoes of Jenny Pitney over at First Salem and lead worship there for the Micah service. Very big shoes to fill. She is fantastic. And Aaron's excited to see where he can help. We have two kids, Isabella, who's going to be a sixth grader this fall at middle school and Wesley will be a third grader. We just moved down from Marysville, Washington, just south of Seattle. We're still getting settled in, uh, but we love exploring. So if you have parks or beaches or towns in Oregon that you love, send them to us. Shoot me an email anytime. We love to explore new places together. And I am a writer, so I spend a lot of my downtime working on little projects here and there. Uh, I, have an, I have a new book project I'm working on that I'm excited about. And I love to walk and be by the water and be out in nature and ride my bike and try to be as active as I can. And yeah, I love music. Um, you do need to know I somehow got tickets to the Taylor Swift concert in Seattle uh, in a week or no, this Saturday. Um, so I'm very excited for that. And yeah, our family's so ready to be with you all. I've been on leave as United Methodist pastor for a year and a half. So I come to you uh, with a little bit of a limp. We've we've had a challenging season, but we feel ready to be fully present among you. So church, it's great to meet you and I look forward to seeing you out and about in the next few months. Friends, receive this benediction. 
May you go in the grace and peace and mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May you go into this world ready to plant some seeds, some love, some grace, and some joy in your world this week. Friends, may we go out from this place to love and serve. Amen.